What's up guys, Shane here with Figure Deck 3D Printing. I've got aluminum extrusion in front of me. It must be time to start the Hypercube build. Welcome back guys. So I am finally, I've been talking about this forever, I'm finally gonna start my Hypercube build. Super stoked about it. I've been printing parts all day, or actually the past two days, I've been printing all the parts. Those aren't done yet. But this is gonna be part one, okay? And this is just gonna be me figuring out how to do the lengths of all the aluminum extrusion, cutting it, and building just the frame. Now, we're gonna need a couple things for this. Let's go over the parts. So obviously, the first thing you're gonna need is some aluminum extrusion. So I have 2020 here, and I have 2040, which I kind of forgot that I bought. I'm not sure where and how I'm gonna use this. I might use this on the base but I'll figure that out as I cut the other parts and get the other things ready to go. Then we'll figure this one out, but this is probably gonna be for just the, around the base frame to keep it a little more sturdy. You're also gonna need a bunch of corner brackets. These are 2028 20, corner brackets, which means they are 20 millimeters wide, 28 millimeters long. All that does, all that means is that you're gonna get more surface area up and down or along the extrusion because you can only go 20 millimeters wide because that's how wide the extrusion is. And they also have these nice little keys in there so they will actually lock into place and make sure they don't move. So these will be very nice. You can use regular 2020s, uh, but I recommend using the 2028s instead. Next, we need a whole bunch of M5 bolts and a whole bunch of M5 T-nuts, which I have both. These are not the final M5 bolts that I'm going to use. They're just the ones I have on hand. The other ones I have coming in are from AliExpress, and they're gonna take a while to get here, but I wanna just get the frame built before I leave, and because I'm not sure when this video is gonna come out, but I wanna get the frame built, I wanna look at it, make sure I have everything that I need, and then whenever those new bolts come in, I'll replace everything, it'll be very easy to swap out. And you're also gonna need something that can measure millimeters, because everything in that is in millimeters. You're gonna need a marker, some painter's tape, and you're gonna need a saw. I thankfully have a miter saw here with a metal blade on it, so which has a high TPI count, which is what you need in order to count these. It's tooth per inch. If you don't have access to that, you're gonna wanna order these custom cut to your size. But how do you know what size you need? Well, you can go by the basic Hypercube specs, which is more or less what I'm doing. I'm only gonna increase the Z height because I wanna be able to print a little bit taller than what it's actually for. I might even do it even taller than that later, but for now, I'm just gonna go with a little bit taller. So the Hypercube can print 200 by the X, 200 by the Y, and 155 on the Z. I want 300 on the Z. So I am going to increase my Z axis 150 millimeters so that I can achieve that. So to do that, I have to measure everything out. I need longer extrusion, longer smooth rods, and longer lead screws in order to accomplish that. Now online, someone had built a configurator for the Hypercube, so I'll link it in the video description below. You can go on there and say how big of a build volume you want, and it will spit out the size of aluminum extrusion that you need. That was pretty awesome. So thank you to the Hypercube group. And if you're not in the Hypercube group and you're thinking about doing something like this, it's Hypercube and Core XY. So there's a mix of other projects like the Volron and other things in there. That will be down in the video description. Go ahead, join that group. There are a ton of smart people in there. I, I've been talking in there so much lately and I thank you guys for getting through all my questions with me. I know I have a lot, but I've never built my own from scratch. I'm trying to stick to what Tech2C made in his video. Uh, also, if you haven't seen his videos, go up here and check out his playlist that runs through everything. I'm gonna be building a lot of how he did it, a few things I'm changing. I'm gonna build it how he did first and see how it works and try and understand why I wanna make the changes that I think need to be made or other people have made changes. There's like almost 200 remixes of different parts for the Hypercube. So you gotta start somewhere, pick a starting place and go from there. I'm starting with his base build. I'm just increasing the Z height. And then all the other parts from him are exactly identical to what is on the Thingiverse page. Okay, we've talked enough about all that. Now for what I need, which I've gone ahead and written down, I need four 340 millimeter pieces, four 303, four 500, two at 285, and one at 135. Now the two 285s and the one 135 is for the bed. So that is the little U bracket that you're gonna create that holds your heated bed on there. You can scale that up again as big as you need to if you wanna do a 250 or 300 or 400 size square. Just check out that configurator and it'll tell you exactly what you need to cut everything to. It's pretty awesome. And for me, again, I only increased the Z height. The only one I'm increasing is the Z axis. So that was 
350, uh, 355 or 345, I think it was, for the Z height. I'm increasing it up to 500. That's a little bit longer than it has to be, but it's also gonna add me some space because I wanna mount the electronics underneath of it, so I might even increase it another 50 millimeters from that just to be on the safe side and have a little bit more space under there to mount things. I don't know how I'm gonna mount them yet. I don't know if I'm gonna use printed parts. Again, tons of things on Thingiverse for this. It is almost overwhelming. I have to spend an entire day just sorting through the remixes and find out what I want to do. But again, that's the only major difference I'm making from from Tech2C's base build to my base build. I think that's it. So I'm going to get some tape on these. I'm going to measure them out. Well, what I do on this is I will measure how much I need, put a piece of painter tape there, and then mark the painter's tape. That way I don't have to worry about this plastic coming off and it just makes it easier to cut, make keeps it a little bit cleaner, things like that. So I'm gonna do all that now. Only I forgot to mention where I got everything from. So these 2028s are from AliExpress. These M5 bolts and the M5T nuts, also AliExpress, slow boat from China. It takes me about 45 to 60 days to get stuff from there due to where I live and the shipping methods that come here. So I have to order stuff way out in advance. So I ordered these months ago. I've been waiting to do the build, so I can at least do this much. The electronics are all in my cart right now. Well, the electronics that I don't have, I'm gonna order those. Again, that's like 60 days from now, and it's currently early June. So it's gonna be a while till that stuff gets here. But the aluminum extrusion I got from Folger Tech. I found them to be the absolute rock bottom cheapest for 2020 aluminum extrusion, or even 2030, 2040. They have 4040 or yeah, 2080, I don't know. They've got a whole slew of different sizes and it sells out like that because for a meter, it's five bucks or 450, 450. And like think total shipping for this was like $11. So for what, $100, I was able to get all the aluminum extrusion and I have way more than enough. I overbought it like crazy because I didn't know how much I would need or what I was gonna change. So it's gonna be easy. I mean, I'm gonna get three cuts just out of one piece of this, which is pretty sweet. And again, everything I bought, links will be in the video description if you guys wanna purchase any of this. Let's get to cutting. Okay, now let's take a look. So we have four 500 millimeter 2020 extrusions. We have two 340 millimeter 2020s and two 340 millimeter 2040s, two 303 millimeter 2020s and two 303 2040. Then we have the two 285 and the one 135 for the bed. This is the frame, bed. So someone did reply to me online and I'm gonna use these 2040s for the base frame that goes around the hypercube. That way you give a little more rigidity and a little more mounting options when I go to mount the electronics down there. So now that the fun part is done, now comes the hard part, which is getting off this plastic. So when you buy from Folger Tech, it's already, they, they get it in who knows how long and they cut it to one meter lengths or one and a half meter lengths. They leave the plastic casing on it and you have all the you know little particles in there from the dust, the aluminum dust we'll call it, from cutting it. Well, now there's even more in there because I just cut these again. So I'm gonna strip all this off, try to keep it on the table so I don't get it on the carpet and get something in my foot. So be careful when you do this. You're dealing with a metal. It's very sharp once you cut it. So I'm also going to probably sand these corners just a smidge just to take off the absolute sharp cutting edge because you're gonna cut your hand up really quick. So I'm gonna do all this real quick and then we'll get back and see how things are going. All right, so once you've cut your aluminum, now what you gotta do something about these edges, because the edges are royally sharp. It could be because maybe I don't have such a, a high enough TPI blade, or I didn't go slow enough, but regardless, they are sharp. I've cut myself way too many times on this extrusion to not do this, so I'm just gonna take a little, I've just got a little Harbor Freight set. Uh, you can pick these up on Amazon or on Harbor Freight, a uh, little file set, and I'm just going to gently, just quickly, not gonna try to change the dimensions of it at all, knock off the outer side of each of these pieces 
just so that it is not so doggone sharp because they again they are absolutely razor sharp they have good cuts and they came from forger tech but they are super sharp when i cut them probably because i'm not doing it right but anyways do this real quick and uh we'll get back Okay, let's clean this up now. Okay, there's the first, the face of the printer. That's gonna be good size. That's the face of the printer right there. Before I go further, I did print out some Pet G feet. I'm gonna put those on real quick because I don't wanna scratch up my table. And these are just 20, 20 feet. There's nothing really special about them. They say they're, they are for the Hypercube. They just are nice because you can kind of fit them on the inside and hide them away where the bolts are. And it, again, doesn't scratch anything up. Uh, I do have other feet that I'm going to use for this instead, which are a little bit taller because I'm probably going to end up moving this extrusion down all the way. Right now, the bottom is 60 millimeters. This bottom strut is 60 millimeters from the bottom of this. I should probably pay more attention to when I'm going to run out of battery on my camera. But anyways, the feet are on there. I don't have to worry about it scratching anything anymore. So here's the front side. Now let's do the back side. Number two, it's going together really well. So far, it seems to be lining up just the way it should. I made sure to, as they always say, measure twice, cut once. I measured like six times just to ensure. And then I ended up just using one piece of extrusion as my guide and then cutting the other three or however many I needed in order to make sure that they were the exact same size. I mean, on here, here, this one here is a little bit high there. I can fix that, that's not too hard. But otherwise, it's looking great. And now I have to pause for a moment because I thought for sure I had more 10 millimeter M5 nuts. I have a crap ton of 12 millimeter ones and I forgot these are the old ones from the D-Force Mini because it came with 12 millimeter, then they sent me 10 millimeter to replace it. I thought I still had a bunch more 10. I still, I still have the whole Y sides to put onto this and I don't have it. So I'm gonna run to the store and see if I can't pick up something like this. Again, I have some Phillips head M5s coming in that will replace everything eventually, but I'm gonna see if I can find something else for now. So I'll be back after a short break. Well, for you it's been like a second, but for me it's been like an hour at least. Okay, trip to the store, epic failure. I'm gonna try again tomorrow. But what I decided to do is I found some 10 millimeter M4s. So I'm using those for the feet that frees up some more for up top. And I think I have some more M5s hidden around here somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Y-axis, the 2040s at the bottom, because those are the most rigid, and then we'll do the top ones once I find some more. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that stable it is so freaking cool looking i like it this is gonna be so boss not gonna lie i am a little bit excited about this all right so that is the bottom is all on there it's nice and it seems to be pretty square everything seems to line up really well i'll take a square to it later and actually just double check because i know one of these was a little high before just to make sure that's perfectly right. Okay, I'm now going to dive into things here and see if I can't find me some more M5 10 millimeter screws. Bolts, they're called bolts. All right, so I swapped out some other things in my other printers to M4s. I had a couple of those left over, so they are non-structural, they're just holding things up kind of type deal. So I stole their M5s, and now let's finish this up. I forgot, I bought black ones I wanted to use. Shoot.
All right, so the only part I didn't put together was this 2020 lumen extrusion. This is for the bed, and that's just gonna have to wait until I finally get other printed parts installed, lead screw, the smooth rods, get all that installed, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so it's all put together. I am going to swap out all of these gray ones for black. I'll do that off camera because you guys don't need to see all that again. It's very stable. It's a good size. I really like the size of it. I think it's gonna turn out really, really well. I'm excited. I think it'll be a whole lot of fun and this can easily be scaled anyway. Again, the configurator's down in the, in the description. Go ahead, check that out. If you're thinking about building one of these and you're curious on how much extrusion you're gonna need for the build volume that you want, there's tons of mods for this. All, I mean, all over Thingiverse. Like I said, there's like 170 some last I looked. So it's getting close to 200 soon. All kinds of stuff out there. There's also the Hypercube Evolution, which uses 3030 extrusion for the outer frame versus 2020. A little bit more uh, sturdy, but the 2020 was just too good of a price for me to pick up, and that's what I preferred. I do wanna add inside the bottom, I'm gonna add corner brackets to connect each of the X and Y sides. So that is something I will do uh, in the future, but again, I'm out of M5 bolts, so I'll have to wait for all those to come in, but at least I got this built. I can now play with the parts, see how everything's gonna look, see how things match up, measure again, and just now that I have something physically in front of me, it's gonna be so much better now that I have it right here in front of me. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you like this video, if you're excited for this build log as much as I am, hit that like button. If you didn't, dislike, talk to me in the comments. If you wanna help me out, hit that subscribe button down below. There's also gonna be a little bell icon, go ahead hit that, that way you get a update anytime that I upload new content to the channel. If you wanna help me out financially, going towards the Hypercube, down below is gonna be a link for Patreon. Go ahead, donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are awesome. If you want to help me out without spending your money, down in the video description will be a bunch of affiliate links. Go ahead down there, update your bookmarks, do your daily shopping with those. A little slice of that comes back to me. Thank you guys for watching so much. I'm super excited for this. And until next time, happy printing.